الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وطبيب نفوسنا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم محمد. صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لا سيما بقية الله روحي وأرباح العالمين لمقدمه الفداء. الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله. Respected scholars, senior members of the community, all the brothers and sisters in Islam and Iman, السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته. And congratulations on the auspicious birth anniversary of the first grandson of the Holy Prophet. The second Imam of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, Alhamdulillah, one of the two masters of the youth of paradise, none other than Imam Hassan Mushtaba, alayhi afdalu salawat wa tahiyyat. I'm so pleased to see faces that I had seen last year, Alhamdulillah, that you are still, we are all still alive and around. Young boys are getting older. Some of them started growing beard, mashallah. That means that you are getting older, uh, by the way, as well. Some faces, I haven't seen them, inshallah, in the coming nights, so I will see them, inshallah. I'm sure that is still there around. Uh, if I may, uh, before I start, uh, play a commercial, Hajriyaz, if you don't mind, is it possible for me to play a commercial? These commercials should appeal to you if you are fasting. Inshallah, every day, uh, we started already from today, every day, uh, lunch, uh, a, a very small breakfast lunch is provided at the masjid after Zohar and As prayer by Sheikh Mansur Laghai, subhanallah. In the masjid, in the month of Ramadan, a sandwich is provided. Hey, this is not a physical sandwich for your, for your physical stomach. It's a sandwich for your spiritual stomach. In the Han Basti, the honey boss showed. We are meant to close the, uh, the mouth and the stomach of our body so that we open and give time to the stomach of our souls. Uh, when I, I call it a uh, sandwich because it's a very short, inshallah, 10 15 minutes talk after uh, uh, Zohar and As prayer. If you have time, if you are free, please join us and enjoy the sandwich. It's exclusively, exclusively for the lovers of the Holy Quran in the month of uh, Quran. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Inshallah, the series of talks, as you must have uh, received the email, you've been informed. This year will be the theme will be about uh, our uh, logbook in Barzakh. I'm going to take you to a very scary but inevitable journey. However, as for tonight, being the birth anniversary of Imam Hassan Mushtaba, I want to share with you in such a way as if tonight Imam Hassan Mushtaba is lecturing us. Imam Hassan Mushtaba is conducting a lesson and respectfully I am quoting a hadith that I have exhausted the books of a hadith collected from here and there and mind you that the narrations from Imam Hassan Mushtaba unfortunately there are not many due to uh, political uh, uh, circumstances at the time of Imam Hassan Mushtaba salam. So I exhausted the books of Ahadis to find, collect all Ahadis related to this topic. The topic that I have chosen and the reason that I am sharing this with you, let me tell you from the words of the Holy Imam himself, that the Imam is praying for those who are reviving the matters and the lifestyle, the values that Ahlul Bayt al-Musalam stood by. Rahimallahu man ahya amrana. May the mercy of Allah be on those that they revive our matters. Our matters, it means our lifestyle. Somebody asked, Ya Abna Rasulullah, how your lifestyle would be revived? How your matters would be revived? The Imam says, Yata'allamu ulumana wa yu'allamuhu nas. Learn our lifestyle, learn our uh, teachings, and share it with others. So each and every one of you tonight are, is the ambassador of Imam Hassan Mushtaba alayhi salam to deliver the message of Imam Hassan Mushtaba alayhi salam to the wider community who could not make it uh, physically here tonight. 
Then the Imam says, once people, they know the beauty of our words and our practices, then naturally they follow us. So if we want to introduce Shia lovers and the followers of Ahlul Bayt, according to this lesson of Imam Hassan Mushtaba, one of the best ways is to show them, show others, wider Muslim community and others, how did Imam Hassan Mushtaba lived his life. The topic that I have chosen for you is one of the most fun fundamental aspects of the life of Ahlul Bayt So fundamental that if this is removed from, uh, from Islam, no longer the person has faith. He or she would not remain faithful anymore, according to the words of Imam Hassan Mushtaba And it's a topic, interestingly, that concerns us all of us, and I'm included first and foremost, and especially concern and should concern the younger generation. As someone who is in his 50s, and I'm telling you my age already, I have noticed, and those who are my age or close to my age, they must have seen this shift and the trend, and there is kind of a rift between the oldest generation, lifestyle of the older generation, and the new generation. One of the issues that I've noticed, it's such a secular practice and lifestyle and unfortunately is creeping into our communities, Muslim community at large, and the more we are mixing and in connection with the secular world, the quicker this culture is like dominating our Islamic culture. And it's just like exactly opposite to the Islamic culture. The new generation, the youngsters, unconsciously are becoming more of the secular world, practicing this culture, because it's become a, a common practice. And being influenced by the peers, it rotates in a nutshell to give you relief. The topic for tonight, according to the teachings of Imam Hassan Mushtaba salam, which is the true teachings of Islam, is about the, uh, the practice of Al-Haya. How many of you know what Haya in, in Arabic that we say hayo, how many know that what is hayo in, in English? Hayo in English has two meanings. Both of them in Arabic we refer to as al hayo. Explain both of them according to the teachings of Imam Hassan Mushtaba alayhi One meaning of hayo is about shyness, is about modesty. It's about having the, the character of being a bit reserved. This is definitely an Islamic value. There's no question, no doubt about it. In the old days, and those elderly, they, they correct me if I'm wrong, ladies, gents, when they were married, they were even embarrassed to put a, like a photo of their wives in their living room. Because especially coming from a religious background, all right? Today, our youngsters, unfortunately, um, uh, uh, forgive me to be frank with you, there is no shame whatsoever that on the profile you see that he's hugging his wife, you know, this newlywed, hugging each other in a very intimate way, and their photo is on the profile, that the whole world watch him. Often I tell them that if you put this photo on the street, hang it on the, on the wall, the bulletin board, on, on billboard even on one of the highways here is less problematic than having it on the net because you allow God knows how many millions of people watch it and there is no shame because it's become a norm in a secular world that has affected us. In the old days I remember when I was a teenager at, at that time girls they would be too modest to appear before their father. I'm talking about girls, even boys when I wanted to talk to my father, Rahmatullah Alai, we would be a bit reserved the way that we talk to our father. Now you see boys and girls address their dad like as if he's talking to one of his mates, Ahmed, and he means his dad. This is a secular culture coming in. It's not an Islamic culture. Girls in the old days, they did not appear in front of their father, in front of their, bro their brothers, the way that they appear today. Sheikh uh, Muhammad al-Halli, Hafadahullah, I asked him last night what he was talking about. He said it was about Tafsir Surah Ahzab, but I didn't get to finish it. I want to get to the end of it, inshallah, and continue where he stopped. 
In Surah Ahzab, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the hijab, there are three levels of mahramiyya. Remember these sisters, brothers, there are three levels of mahramiyya. Yes, apart from husband and wife, that there is no regulations. That is nothing. The first level of mahramiyya, that there is least mahramiyya between them, is between a girl and her father. Your father is mahram to you, yet doesn't mean that you appear before your dad as you wish. It's not decent. It's against the principle of haya and modesty to wear singlet and, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, short skirt or appear kind of semi-naked before your dad. Tight clothes. It is not decent. Yet your dad is closer to you in mahramiyya than your father-in-law when you get married. Then your uncle, and by your uncle, I'm talking about the brother of your father and the brother of your, your mother. See, in the English world, in the secular world, because there's no mahram, non-mahram, everyone is uncle. Huh? When I say uncle, unless I explain it in English, you don't know who I'm talking about. Because there's no such issue. For us Muslims, not everyone is your uncle. This uncle that I'm talking about who is your mahram is either your father-in-law or the brother of your father or the brother of your mother. Yes, they are mahram to you, but not in the same way that your dad is mahram to you. So the way that sister you appear before your father-in-law, the way that you appear before your, uh, the brother of, uh, you know now what I mean, your, your uncle must be more modest, dress more, more modestly. Subhanallah, according to teachings of the Qur'an, the way that you walk matters and can give the expression of your modesty or God forbid immodesty. In Surah Al-Qasas, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates the, the story of Moses, Allah Nabi wa alayhi salam, when he went uh, to later on to meet up with Prophet Shu'ayb, look what Qur'an says that one of the daughters of Shu'ayb came to call Musa a strange man. فَجَاءَتْهُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَا قَالَتْ إِنَّ أَبِي يَدْعُوكَ Or answers one of the two girls, they came to Moses as a non-mahram. تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَا She's walking, but she's walking modestly. This is حيا, استحيا from حيا. That means the way that you walk even matters. Your shyness, your modesty, your reserve character must be even uh, demonstrated in the way that you talk, the way that you walk, the dress that you, you wear, all of the above matters. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the role model for all Muslims, sallallahu Muhammad wa Muhammad. He was the most modest person. I don't know, I, unfortunately, I'm telling you, I have to bring this issue up tonight and in such places, not in necessarily to the new generation, because it seems I'm talking about history, speaking about the haya and, and shyness. In the old days, if they wanted to give an example of a very shy person, because although shyness is a virtue, modesty is a virtue, both for men and women, boys and girls, girls by nature are expected to be more modest and it's expected more from them. The nature even de demands that. And that's why when non-Muslims, they come to our mosque and Islamic centers in the West, and they say that, why is it that you put curtain, men and uh, gents and ladies are separated? I explain to them usually that because Muslim prayers requires, has different postures. It is not becoming, it is not modest for a female that she's bowing and prostrating and a guy is standing behind her. Even if they don't practice the oh yeah, okay, I understand. That, that's understandable. That's why in our religion, subhanAllah, even if a girl, a lady is praying in her own bedroom and there's no non-mahram around, for the same reason that she's required to dress her hijab fully, she is also required to follow some mustahabbat that is not for men as an expression of her modesty, exercise of modesty, even praying privately at home in your bedroom by yourself. And that's why it is mustahab for ladies to bend their knees. It's mustahab for them to rest their arms. You see, the, 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 the way they appear before the Lord because an expression, exercise of modesty. Imagine a girl who's 
conscious of such practices, how is she supposed to deal outside with her classmates, with her male teachers, with, with non-Mahraman and others? Has to be reserved a little bit and modest in the way that she's communicating with non-Mahraman. By the way, Imam Hassan Mushtaba says, My grandfather Rasulullah, Kana Rasulullah, Ashad the Nas Haya and Menal, Ashad the Haya and Menal Avra fi Khedraha. If they wanted in the old days to give an example of a very modest person, they would say, Like a non married girl, a virgin girl who's not married. Girls who are not married, they were too reserved, too modest, too shy to speak to a non Mahram. Her face would go blushing. Her cheeks would go red when a suitor comes and she wanted to talk to. Not subhanallah, inshallah, we don't have it in, in, in this community. Like some girls that there is no shame. Subhanallah, there is no shame. The way that they speak with guys, this is not an Islamic uh, character. This is not the character of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. Imam Hassan Mushtaba, alayhi salam, says that the Prophet was a male, yet his modesty was like, as if, in terms of his modesty, as if he is a, a, a non-married girl. He was more modest than a non-married girl. Quran in Surah Al-Ahzab, I told you that I want to continue where Sheikh uh, Hilli uh, stopped. In Surah Al-Ahzab, Quran gives an example of the, uh, the, like the lifestyle of the Prophet when it comes to his modesty and shyness in his social character. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, certain rules until comes Idha du'eetum fathkhulu, fa idha ta'imtum fantashiru, wala musta'nithina, wala musta'nithina la hadith إِنَّ ذَلِكُمْ كَانَ يُعْذِ النَّبِيِّ فَيَسْتَحْيِي مِنْكُمْ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَسْتَحْيِي مِنَ الْحَاقِ Oh you believers, don't go to someone's house unannounced unless you are invited. And now that you are invited, like talking about the house of the Prophet, the Prophet has invited you over for iftar. You went to the Prophet's house for iftar or for dinner. After the iftar or after dinner, you must have seen some people, mashallah, they relax now. Sit back, relax, and chit-chatting, chit-chatting. The Prophet was too modest to tell them, brothers, it's getting late. Alhamdulillah, you had your, your food and uh, my family, the, it's the time, it's my family time, the party is over. The Prophet was too modest to tell them, you may leave. It's not nice for the host to say that. Quran says, The Prophet is too modest, too shy to tell you, you may leave. You have to understand your, your duty yourself. Wallahu la yastahi min al haq. But it's the time that God has to discipline you. That was the lifestyle of the Prophet. Another example, and I'll bring you closer to, uh, to the uh, lifestyle of Imam Hassan Mushtawa, which is the continuation of the same, the same pattern. Imam Hassan says that, and subhanAllah, we have this narrated from the lifestyle of Imam Hassan Mushtawa, the Holy Prophet before that. Imam Zainul Abidin, Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam were like this, because they are nur wahid Imam Hassan Mushtaba says, the Prophet when he was conversing with men, forget about females, conversing with men, he would not come to eye contact. Yu'li hayya'an, he would lower his gaze out of shyness, out of modesty. Subhanallah, this is Rasulullah. Imam Hassan Mushtaba was also like this, as I told. There are those who have observed the lifestyle of Imam Zainul Abidin, they, they narrated the same and so forth. So one meaning of uh, haya is being modest. Remember this. This modesty, why did I say that nature has made it for the females to be more modest and preserve their modesty? Because this modesty, brothers and sisters, if you want to know why do I need to be like this, because modesty is like invisible glass of protection. It's an immune system for the protection of the person. The more modest the girl is, and subhanAllah, Imam Hassan Mushtaba alayhi salam says, بِقَدْرِ الْحَيَا تَكُونُ الْعِفَّةِ If you want to know how chaste the person is, see how modest the person is. Because the immodesty opens the gate of committing sexual sins. Modesty is like an immune system, immune in the females. Males and females who will be immune against committing sexual sins. The more modest we are, the more immunity around us. And as we all know that once a person loses the immune system, we'll be prone to so many diseases. So this is one meaning of al-hayat, that is modesty and shyness and being reserved and uh, 
like for the sake of uh, protection of uh, decency. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. The second meaning of al-haya in English, for both of them in Arabic we use the term haya. In English, haya has another meaning. And that is not shyness or modesty. That is being like embarrassed. This is shame. Haya also means shame, means embarrassment. What does it mean? I give you an example about myself. And the more you have a, a status in the community, the more this should concern us. I'm sure we all agree that we live by our reputation and our, our credit is reputation. In businesses, in any field, if you have a good reputation, your credit, like you have a good uh, reputation in, in your business, that they know that you are not a force or, or you're not getting people's money, people easily lend you. Doesn't, ha doesn't matter how much money you have or not, okay? So our fame, our face plays a big role in our success in society. Haya, it means feeling of pain that is caused by the consciousness or exposure of, uh, what should I call it, exposure of unworthy. A an indecent conduct I did something that it became a public knowledge and then you turn and say, Sheikh, shame on you. That is not becoming of a Sheikh. That is not becoming of a moment to do this, let alone a Sheikh. Huh? In Arabic they refer to this as a Haya as well. And we all now know why we care about our reputation. I don't want to be embarrassed before anyone. This is also so important. Ahlul Bayt salam, and particularly Imam Hassan Mushtaba alayhi salam, he always, they always live the life of being embarrassed before God for shortcomings. Imam Hassan Mushtaba alayhi salam made his way to Hajj 20 times on foot from Medina to Mecca 20 times. That means 20 years he went to Hajj. He could afford it to ride a horse, but he went on foot. Listen to the reason. When they ask Imam Hassan Mushtaba alayhi salam, why do you go on foot? And you can use the same analogy for those who go Arbaeen on food. Can't we just go by bus or car? Isn't it quicker to get to Karbala? Why do we have, why do we not we have to, why it is mustahab and people from Najaf, they walk to Karbala? It's an expression of humbleness and also because Imam Hassan Mushtaba says, I am ashamed before my Lord for my shortcomings. Like I want to go to, to my God like a slave. Like someone who cannot afford anything. Like a slave who is going back to his lord, to his master, to his cherisher, feeling ashamed of shortcomings. He may forgive me if I just walk back. Like somebody, you know, like a convict that is walking back. With, with like, I'm going back confessing that, God, I'm sinful and I've made a mistake. I'm walking back to you. So walking to, uh, to Hajj or walking to Karbala, Imam Hassan Mushtaba alayhi salam says, because I'm embarrassed before my Lord. Imam Hassan is sitting outdoor and he's having food. A dog was sitting in front of the Imam, looking at the Imam. A morsel Imam puts in his mouth and another one throws to the dog. Someone came and said, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, do you want me to remove this dog? Imam says, no, I'm ashamed of my Lord that a living creature is before me, sitting in front of me, and I ignore it. Don't push it away. It's the sustenance of God. This is called haya also in the Islamic uh, tradition. Now, when it comes to the lifestyle of Ahlul Bayt and Muslim, examples that exercise always goes to the extreme, to the highest extreme, so that we know that if we're, this is where Fatima to Zahra stood, imagine where our girls they should be. At least you cannot be to the level of Fatima to Zahra, but to your own level, at least practice it. What I'm talking about? You know all of this story. A blind man, the Prophet was at Fatima Zahra's house. A blind man came to the house to ask the Prophet a question. He's blind, in pair vision, cannot see. Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayha, is sitting with her dad. The moment that the blind man walks in, Fatima went to the back door and to the other room. Allah's Messenger said, my dear daughter, he cannot see. Look at the answer of Fatima, expression of her modesty here. She said, if he cannot see me, I can see him. 
and he can smell me. That means, subhanAllah, a non-mahram is not supposed to even smell the scent of a non-mahram girl or female. Not only that, she says, yes, he cannot see me, but it is not modest for a girl to appear before a non-mahram man, even if he's blind. Even if he's blind. It's psychological. I don't feel comfortable. Ladies, they know what I'm talking about. Alhamdulillah, mu'minat, they know. I don't feel comfortable to appear before a non-mahram, even if he's blind and he cannot see me. It's psychologically, it's the, it's the expression of modesty. Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Enjoy this haya to the extreme that we call it haya ul karam. One of the famous titles of Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba is Karim Ahlul Bayt. Have you heard of this? Karim Ahlul Bayt. Imam Hassan, Karim Ahlul Bayt. Brothers and sisters, Karim doesn't mean generous. Let this be my humble contribution tonight to translate the term Karim for you. Karim, if you put the generosity and nobility of a character, someone who is noble in his character, that I will explain, as well as being generous, mix them together, the production is called in Arabic Karim. Like, someone may be very generous, extremely generous, but when you go to him and he wants to give you something, a gift, donation, or whatever, he is embarrassing you before everybody. He's belittling you, he's making fun of you, yet he gives a lot. This person in Arabic language is not called Karim. Yes, he's generous, he's spending a lot, but he's not noble in the way that he spends. Someone who gives generously, but does not humiliate you before others, does not let anyone else know. As the expression of Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba, if I give with my right hand, I don't let my left hand even know about it. Let alone family members, let alone members of the community. is so discreet in the way that they are uh, generously donating, such are called Kareem. Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba was Kareem Ahlul Bayt al-Musalam. A noble, generous person. And because of that, no matter how much they gave for the sake of God, wealth and money, they always felt there's a shortcoming. They were embarrassed. Remember second meaning of Hayah. They were embarrassed before God for shortcoming. Before I give the example of Imam Hassan, like uh, to freshen up your, your, your memory, in the story of Karbala, remember Bibi Zainab Salamullah Alayha. She gave her two sons. Before her sons are martyred, any of the Bani Hashem that are martyred, she used to go and help her brother. But when her sons were martyred, she stayed in the tent, didn't come out. Later on, when she was asked, she said, because I was embarrassed that I wish I had more to give. And I didn't want my brother to look at me. Maybe he feels uncomfortable that I have given my sons, although it was my honor. This is called Haya ul Karam. Imam Hassan Mushtaba alayhi salam. An example from Haya ul Karam of Imam Hassan. See how generously the Imam gives and secretly, and yet how he's, he says that I'm embarrassed before God. A man who had a status in the community. A businessman. I, wish, I never wish any of you to go through this experience of bankruptcy. I've had counseling with people that often they get close to the luck like, committing suicide because they went bankrupt. Astaghfirullah. But this person, the, the, he had, his relation with Imam Hassan was a bit sour. The time of Imam Hassan was the time of so much propaganda against Ahlul Bayt Alayhi Remember, post Imam Ali Alayhi Salam's martyrdom. So it was unfortunately so common for people who were brainwashed to speak ill against Ahlul Bayt on the top of them, Imam Hassan Mushtaba Alayhi Salam. So this man also had spoken ill about Imam Hassan Mushtaba Alayhi Salam. Subhanallah, time came that he went bankrupt and penniless. Anyone he approached, no one was there to help him. Everyone was saying, man, you are in a will pool. If I want to help you, I will be drowned as well. But you may go to Karim Ahlul Bayt, expression for Imam Hassan Mushtaba alayhi salam. You may go to Karim Ahlul Bayt, he is noble, he is generous, he will help you. The man says, I can't go to Hassan because he knows what I've been talking about him. But when you are desperate, you don't care. You try your luck. He went to Imam Hassan's house. The man has some sense of poetry as well. He goes to the house of Imam Hassan Mushtaba alayhi salam. 
I, I told you he had a status. He didn't feel comfortable, especially to someone who he's been gossiping about. He didn't want to explicitly ask for help. Look at what he says. I quote his poem and see, subhanAllah, the lifestyle of Ahlul Bayt, -Salam, such a beautiful, noble model. The man goes to Imam Hassan in a poetic way and he says that, Lam yabghali shay'un, he's reading like a matam. Lam yabghali shay'un, yuba'u bidirhami, yakfik manzaru hali am mukhbiri, illa baqaya ma'i wajhin suntuhu, waqad wajadtuka, illa yuba'u waqad wajadtuka mushtari. Translation. In a poetic way, implicitly, he says, Oh, nothing is left for me. He's sitting in the house in the living room of Imam Hassan, and Imam has some other visitors, and he started all of a sudden out of blue saying this poem, Oh, I have no penny left, and my misery speaks for itself. I have nothing left other than a bit of face that I decided to keep it for myself, but it seems I have to sell it to you. Meaning to Imam Hassan Mujtaba alayhi salam. Imam Hassan Garab went inside. Back then, obviously, there was no banks. So people used to keep their money in a safe. Imam Hassan Mushtaba salam, had a treasury. He goes to the treasury and says, how much do we have in the safe? The treasury says 12,000 dirham, dinar, currency of, of that time. Imam says, give, give all of it to this man. The treasury says, but you have not a sulala. You know sometimes your accountants are giving you advice. <laughs> But you have not Rasulullah, all of it? Imam says, yes, all of it. But we'll be left with nothing. Imam says, Ahsan Allah Nabillah. Trust God. Rest assured, God is provider. The same God who provided this money is there tomorrow to provide as well. He is miserable. He is desperate. Give it all to him. It's not much. The man goes and gives the money to, uh, to the beggar, to the bankrupt. From behind the curtain, look at what Imam answers him. Gave him the money indirectly. He didn't go to him himself so that he doesn't feel embarrassed. Yet Imam Hassan, Allahu Akbar, have a goosebump. Imam Hassan Mushtaba is embarrassed before God. Has this haya, haya ul karam. A noble person, no matter how generous he is, still he feels there's a shortcoming. Allahu Akbar, I remember this ayah. Alladina yu'tuna ma atau. وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةٌ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ The true pious believers are those that they give all what they can. And yet their hearts are in trouble, fearful. Because I'm going to my Lord. إِنَّ النَّقَادَ بَصِيرٌ Because God is so precise. It's nitpicking. How sincere. They ask Amir al-Mumani, how much do you give? How much do you pray? Imam says, only if I knew if it's accepted. This is Haya ul Karam. Imam Hassan Mushtaba indirectly sends all what he had in his safe to the man who used to speak against him and look from behind the curtain in a poetic way. Imam improvised. He had prepared his poem, but Imam Hassan Mushtaba improvised. Imam says, Ajaltana fa'atak wa bilu birrina tallan. وَلَوْ أَمْهَلْتَنَا لَمْ تُمْطَرُوا فَخُذِ الْقَلِيلَ وَكُنْ كَأَنَّكَ لَمْ تُبِعْ مَا صُنْتَهُ وَكَأَنَّنَا لَمْ نَشْتَرِ Those who have Arabic background, they know that subhanAllah, the style of the poem of Imam follows the style of the poem of that person. And Imam improvised. Without any preparation, of course. Translation. The Imam says that you came, you hastened to us. You came to us unannounced. And you came at the time that the heavy rain of our generosity has turned into drizzling. Subhanallah, look at the, you know how eloquent the Imam is. The, the heavy rain of our generosity has turned to drizzling. Why? Because we are living the time of poverty. Between brackets, go to the footnote quickly. Imam Baqir narrates later on that at the time of Imam Hassan Mushtaba, the Shia community were so financially restricted because there was so much sanctions on them by Muawiyah uh, group and party that ladies, when they wanted to go out, they would share their chador with each other. That, that was. So Imam Hassan says that you have come at the time of poverty to us. At the time that the heavy rain of our generosity has turned into drizzling. If you had given me more time, perhaps I could arrange more fun for you. 
never mind. Fakhudi la qalil. Take this little, all what he had, all what was in his safe. Fakhudi la qalil wa kun ka anna kalam tube. Take this little, and you said that I have a little bit of face left. Save your face. As if you have not sold it, and I'm not there to buy it of you. This is called Haya ul Karam, the generosity of Imam Hassan Mushtaba. No matter how generous he becomes to his enemy, yet he doesn't see it. He sees it as something very little. Haya has a higher definition that, inshallah, if you help me with salawat, I will share it with you. Remember I mentioned that first meaning of haya is shyness, modesty. Second meaning of haya is shame and embarrassment. Shame and embarrassment, we usually understand like the examples that I gave you in the community. I don't want to be embarrassed before my dad, before my, my wife, husband, brothers, sisters, community members. Huh? We want to uh, preserve our, uh, our haya and our uh, reputation. امام حسن مشتبا علیه السلام سیز کما تستحیون استحیو من الله فی سرائرکم کما تستحیون من الناس فی علانیتکم Do you see brother, do you see sister How much you care about your reputation How embarrassed you feel If your secret is disclosed To your father Like a, a, a sister she was talking about something and I said to her that in your bedroom if the photo of your dad is framed and is uh, on the shelf can you still do this and she said no I can't I said try it you will see it's difficult and it's only the photo of your dad photo of your husband it's not real the photo cannot see you psychologically you feel embarrassed man just the photo of your wife psychologically you feel embarrassed from your wife Imam Hassan says Allah Akbar be ashamed on shame. Be ashamed of God, really. What kind of a believer am I? That I'm embarrassed of the photo of my husband, my wife, my friend, my father, but I'm not embarrassed of the one who is all knowing, all seeing. This is the, the real haya is there. An Imam mentions in the story of Prophet uh, Yusuf, you know the story. I give the, trans, the interpretation of Imam Hassan Mushtaba السلام, in that sense. I told that today, tonight is the lesson of Imam Hassan Mushtaba. That Quran mentions, Lola and Ra'a Burhan Rabbi. Had it not been that Prophet Yusuf saw the evidence, the proof of God, he would have inclined towards her. That means Yusuf did not even incline towards that uh, uh, mortal sin. Why? Because he saw the proof of God. Imam Hassan explains, do you know what was the proof of God? In the movie of uh, Prophet Yusuf, you might have watched it. When Zulaikha said, hey, Talak prepared herself for, for Yusuf, young Yusuf, then on the shelf, the statue of her or her God, uh, in other words, so-called God, the wooden God is on, on the shelf. She felt embarrassed and ashamed to do commit, to commit adultery before her idol, Allah Akbar, wooden idol. She goes and drops a cloth, a cloth on, on, the, uh, on, on God <laughs> to make God blind. Prophet Yusuf says, Astaghfirullah, I'm sorry to say this, don't laugh. You know why? Because we are not much different often. Let's, let's face it. We are not much different. I told you that. If the photo of my dad prevents me from a scene, I'm no better than Zulaikha. If the photo of my spouse makes me embarrassed, I'm no better than Zulaikha. What kind of God do I worship? Imam Hassan says, Yusuf 10 announces, min la yasma' wa la yubsir wa la yafqah wa la ya'kul wa la yashrab ولا أستحي من الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وخلق الإنسان. You feel embarrassed from an idol, from a wooden, you know, idol, so-called God, and and this cannot see, cannot understand. You want me not to be embarrassed from Allah سبحانه وتعالى, and therefore he ran away. لولا أن رأى برهان. Imam says that this is the meaning of God showed him there. That was the evidence. That was the proof. If you see that the photo of your dad is there and you feel embarrassed, this is a proof of God against you on the day of judgment. Be careful. Therefore, Imam says, 
استحیو من الله کما تستحیون من الناس فی علانیتکم Secretly in your privacy be ashamed of God as you feel ashamed of people publicly There is an ayah, I want to read it tonight is a happy occasion and may God forgive me, it's a figure of a speech, you understand, you don't take it literally. This ayah, I think when God is narrating this ayah, it's just like astaghfirullah, may God forgive me, subhanallah, like as if God is in tears, God is crying for himself. God as if saying that, what kind of God am I then, are there for them? What kind of God these Muslims, they believe? Quran says, yastaghfoon min al-nas, wa la yastaghfoon min Allah, wa huwa ma'ahum, Allahu Akbar. Look, they try to hide it from humans, from his partner or her partner, from their friends, from parents. But they don't care that God is watching them and they cannot hide from him. وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ Imam Hassan Mushtaba alayhi salam says this is the real meaning of haya, embarrassment, shame. That وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ there are so-called Muslims, they, they don't give a due respect to God as they give to a young boy. If there's a young boy around, they don't commit that sin. They are embarrassed of that living creature. Young boy, believe me as a counselor, she said that my cat was in my room and I was embarrassed to chat with a non-mahram. My cat! And God says, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ they don't give a due respect to their creator. You give a respect to a cat, and therefore you don't like to be naked in front of a, a, a cat or whatever, but you are not embarrassed that God is watching. What, what is your understanding? What is your definition of God? What kind of God do we worship? To, uh, to sum it up, the lesson tonight from Imam Hassan Mushtaba alayhi salam was about al-haya, the practice of haya, the lifestyle of haya that has two meanings, at least if not three. One meaning is about shame and, and uh, shyness and modesty. Second, about shame and being embarrassed. But when we speak about embarrassment, has two levels of embarrassment. Lower level is to be embarrassed before people that you care about your reputation in the community. Fair enough, anything that is Preventing us from sinning is good, but better meaning of haya is that I should be ashamed to sin before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because God is everywhere, I should watch what I say, what I see, what I do, no matter where I am. Please be conscious of your needs. It's the night of the happy occasion of Ahlul Bayt al Muslim. You please with your participation, Imam Zaman Ajalallah Farajo Sharif, be conscious of your needs or hawa'ej, those who ask you to pray for them on the top of it, the quick reappearance of Imam al hujja Jalallah Farajo Sharif, and I read this part of Dua Tawassul, hoping that we get our gift from Imam Hassan Mushtaba alayhi salam. Ya Aba Muhammad, Ya Hassan ibn Ali, Ayyuhal Mushtaba, Ya Ibn Rasulillah, Ya Hujjat Allah ala khalqi, يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيها عند الله اشفع لنا عند الله بالنبي وعلى الفاتح مع الصلوات